The art of Japanese drumming, known as Taiko, can improve teamwork, self-control, and communication. All great things, and now you can learn how. Co-artistic director Rome Hamner of the South Bay Beat Institute is a certified Taiko teacher and performer, and she's here to tell us about an upcoming workshop. Rome, hello there. Hi, Len. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for being with us this morning. Now, for those not familiar with Taiko, tell us what it's all about. Break it down for us. So... In a nutshell, taiko is Japanese drumming, um, but the way most of us know it now today, it's really a combination of Japanese drumming and jazz. And the person who is credited with inventing this modern face of the art form uh, was a Japanese man who was a jazz drummer. So the kind of drumming you'll see in taiko today tends to be pretty athletic. Uh, it's really, it's part music, it's part martial art, it's part team sport. Uh, there's a very large theatrical element involved, and it is really fun. And along with being fun, it also helps you improve a lot of things. A long list here. Tell us about those. Yeah, so taiko is great, obviously, for sense of rhythm, for developing a sense of rhythm. And what folks might not know is that a strong sense of rhythm is really highly correlated with um, stronger literacy. Uh, it's also got the benefits of, like I said, it's a team sport, so it's group drumming and each member of the group is responsible for their own rhythm line. So participants learn a lot about sort of being responsible for and owning the part of a thing that is theirs, but also making space for the other folks that they're working with and playing with to put forward and contribute the thing that they are responsible for or that they have as their strength. So there's a lot of um, uh, social emotional growth that can happen from playing taiko as well. And on top of all of those things, you can burn some calories too, right? You can. Yeah, it's really athletic. You've, if you've ever seen a taiko performance, you've probably seen the performers have these huge gestures and there tends to be some pretty active choreography. So, yeah, it's a great workout. It's also accessible. There are lots of adaptations that can be made to the art form for people who might have um, reduced mobility or other uh, issues that they're that they're working with in their bodies. And how did the Bay Area play a role in just growing and developing taiko in the U.S.? Yeah, the Bay Area is huge in taiko history here in the States. So two of the three first taiko groups started here were started right here in the Bay Area. The first was the San Francisco Taiko Dojo started by Seichi Tanaka in 1969. The second taiko group in the country was Kinata Taiko down in Los Angeles. So we can't claim that one. Uh, but the third group was San Jose Ta Taiko started right here in San Jose, where I am, in 1973. And these three groups have really shaped the art form and sort of the three mm, general styles that you might see here in the United States. And ever since then, the Bay Area has really been kind of the, the epicenter of taiko development and growth in this country. In fact, I moved here specifically for taiko and because it is such a taiko-rich environment. And the great thing, as you mentioned, is people can now learn how to do their own taiko thing, right? Right. You can go to the Playful People Productions website, which is playfulpeople.org, for the information and for registration. It's a first and third Saturday class starting October 2nd, running through December 18th. And folks are going to get a nice um, grounding in the basics of the art form. They're going to learn uh, at least one song, probably more than one song. And we're going to do some work with soloing, which is really important in taiko. Uh, and that's, you know, the jazz roots in taiko kind of coming through. OK. And of course, we can't talk about taiko without hearing out sounds. So you're going to show off your skills for us this morning. I will. And so we have um, mutes on all of our drums because it's probably obvious why. You're still going to hear it just fine, though. But just so you know, it will be. Um, that's what this thing on top of the drum is. Can you see me OK? Yeah, we can see you. OK. So I am going to play for you the song Matsuri. Matsuri is the Japanese word for festival. This is kind of a North American taiko standard that you are likely to hear at most taiko performances you might go to here in the Bay Area. Here I go. Very nice. Showing off the skills for us. We appreciate it. Sounds good. 
It's been my pleasure. I think I might have to learn myself. Thank you so much, Romy. Appreciate it. Thanks, Len. It was nice to meet you. Nice Thank to you meet very much. you as well. And the South Bay Beat Institute six-week Taiko drumming course begins October 2nd. For more information, visit playfulpeople.org.